Hey there. I thought I was gonna go live, but it turns out that my channel doesn't meet the uh, requirements yet. And I assume that that means that I don't have enough uh, people following me. I think we are above where we were before. Right now, why have I got this out? Well, what I'm actually doing is I am watering some of the areas where I've put down a little bit of seed. So, let's see if I can flip this girl around. Just putting some water down here. Trying to water things in. What you can see, we'll get in here nice and close. Got some pretty good germination. So, I know, it's early. Probably shouldn't be out here doing what I'm doing, but I am anyway, so sue me. Part of, part of the reason that I'm, I'm watering this every single day too is to bring the heat down in this area. And you can see here, that both there and down here are big heat sinks. What's a heat sink? Glad that you asked that. A heat sink is any type of material that absorbs or retains heat. So for example, in a, in a computer, in a laptop, in a desktop, which not many people have those anymore, you have heat sinks on some of the hardware within the computer, which draws heat away from the components. Well, in this case, these heat sinks, okay, hold and retain heat. And then they transfer this heat to the soil that the grass is planted in. That is a very bad deal, especially if you're grass. This, uh, I did a couple of uh, demonstrations where I put a meat thermometer in the ground and demonstrated what the temperature of the soil was. The other day in this area I did it and it was well over 80 degrees. I can tell you this, the soil of the ground is not as variable as the air temperature. And so even though the air temperature may get up to 90 degrees and then later that night be 60 degrees, your soil temperature is going to tend to go up and down much slower. So if this soil here is 80 degrees, later at night, this soil is likely still gonna be in the 70s, even if your air temperature is 60. We've finally gotten down where we're getting out of uh, having nighttime lows of the high 70s, 75s, a lot of times in this area during the summer. We're actually down into low 60s. It was 63 the other day, which is really, really nice if you're trying to take care of any grass. Why is that important? Well, in order for us to not only germinate seed, okay, the energy to germinate any seed comes from the seed itself. Once that seed is germinated, then it's looking to draw the necessary energy to continue its life as a mature plant from its environment. And that means from the soil. It also means that it needs to be cool enough where that little seedling can survive. If you've got daytime temperatures that are in excess of 80 degrees, it's probably too hot. So the reason that people overseed in the fall is they're looking for ground temperatures that are warm enough to stimulate germination, which is over 50 degrees for cool season grass and air temperatures that are low enough that allow that germinated seedling then to survive throughout the rest of the year. So it's kind of cool. I found a website online that talks about, or doesn't talk about, it gives you the data that you need to make those decisions. And it looks like about September 14th is where the average ground temperature for my area gets below 75 degrees. And that's a statistical average. So that could be 
And that's a 10-year statistical average. If you look at the five-year statistical average, it's slightly higher. And then it also gives you a 24-hour statistical average of what the soil temperature is. It'll give you the soil temperature right now. It'll give you the soil temperature from yesterday. And you can also go on there and look at some of the historical data for what that, that's been. Okay, makes sense? I seeded in this area here just because it was really getting burnt up. I think uh, the fact that I've been able to cool it down every single day in the evening is helping these plants that are currently here not just the seedlings, to survive. So what is the average temperature range that cool season grass likes? Well, I'm glad you asked. Cool season grass likes air temperatures anywhere from 39 degrees to 79 degrees. Once it gets either hotter or colder than those average air temperatures, your seed, sorry, not your seed, but your plants Will begin to go into a dormant state. Dormant state, that means brown, non-growing. If it is too hot for too long, your grass will die. You may have played at a golf course that may have been a Bermuda course, and they may have had something called winter kill. That's when it's too cold for too long, and even though that Bermuda is dormant, it actually gets killed off because the temperature is too low for that plant to survive. Same thing we're dealing with our cool season grasses. If it's too hot too long, that'll burn things out. Now, done water and all this. I'm gonna take you down here, I wanna show you something. Got a project going on here. And I guarantee that not a one of my neighbors understands what's going on. What do you see right here? Looks like there was a fire, right? You can see a nice crisp line that follows all the way down here. You know what I don't have out here anymore? No more Bermuda. So I've taken this area, I sprayed it earlier, I mowed it down, took it down to a level where it would stress out any of the grass that was here. And then I also went and I sprayed it with Roundup. Now the Roundup made it pretty crunchy, which was, that was awesome. That's exactly what we're looking for. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do is over here by the mailbox, I'm gonna put in a planter just because, like we talked about before, this area, right along here, you've got a heat sink here, okay? And you've got a heat sink that is the road and those two things are not going away. So I might as well, very similar to what's going on over here, I got a planter. I'm gonna put a planter close uh, so that I'm not trying to grow grass in an area that doesn't want to grow grass. So anyway, long story short, I took a torch and I literally torched this area. Part of the reason that I did that is I wanted to release all of the nutrients, all of the minerals, so it could be N, P, K, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, uh, it could be any of the elemental iron, all of those things that whatever that grass had up taken from the soil gets returned to the soil. Excellent source of carbon. It's going to really enhance, I think, the soil. The next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to hit it with uh, a round of humic. I'm going to hit it with a round of aerate just to get things prepared. I'm very close to pulling the trigger on getting some green punch that I can spray on here because I really, really, really this fall want to push. Um, not so much the nitrogen, but I wanna, I wanna push the root development as much as I can during the fall. Get the super green, super thick. Uh, you can see it looks pretty healthy. This is the first summer that I've used a Green County uh, fertilizer system and program. And I can tell you this, this is the most healthy that this grass has looked. So enough of my rambling, but just a quick update on what's happening in the front lawn. See you guys later.